Hiya, welcome to Biomed Sessions with me, Ruse. Today we're going to be learning the functions of the cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are nerves arising from the brain, including brainstem. They are best seen from an inferior view, i.e. the underside of the brain, and there are 12 pairs of them in total, numbered according to where each emerges. A good way of learning cranial nerve functions is by copying out and memorising this picture, which is basically just a head with shoulders, composed of the numbers of all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Learn this and you'll have a pretty good idea of what each pair does. We'll go through it together. Cranial nerve 1 is the olfactory nerve. It is sensory, therefore relays information back to the brain. In this case, this will be in relation to olfaction, which is basically just your sense of smell. Handy, because the number 1 is the nose in the diagram. Cranial nerve 2, also sensory, is the optic nerve and is involved in vision. Number 3 is the ocular motor nerve. It is mainly motor, hence relays information from the brain to effectors such as muscle. Alongside cranial nerves 4 and 6, the ocular motor nerve is involved in eye movements. It is in fact related to so many eye movements that it would be best to learn which eye movements it's not involved in. If isolated, it cannot help move the eye down and out. This is the job of cranial nerve 4 and it does not help abduct the eye. This is the job of cranial nerve 6. The oculomotor nerve also has autonomic functions, i.e. those that are involuntary slash unconscious. These include eyelid elevation, pupil constriction, and changes in the shape of the lens in order to focus on objects. This is known as lens accommodation. Cranial nerve 4 is the trochlear nerve. As mentioned previously, it is involved in moving the eye down and out. This actually occurs through a combination of depression, abduction, and inward rotation of the eye. Cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve, is mixed, carrying both sensory and motor fibres. Tri means three, which hints at the fact that this nerve has three branches which together aid in facial and teeth sensation, in addition to sensation from the front and middle thirds of the tongue, or more officially, the anterior two thirds. Also, it has motor fibres which are involved in mastication, i.e. biting and chewing. As we know, the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6, the last of the three nerves involved in eye movement, abducts the eye. Abducens, abduction. Cranial nerve 7 is the facial nerve. It has motor fibres for facial expression and sensory fibres which are involved in taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Not to be confused with the trigeminal nerve, which aids in general sensation to this same region. A good way of remembering the facial nerve's function is to imagine your facial expression as you taste your favourite piece of food. Additionally, the facial nerve is involved in saliva and tear secretion. The vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8, is a sensory nerve which gets its name from the structures in the inner ear which it innervates, the cochlea, which is involved in hearing, and the vestibule, which is involved in balance. Hence, the vestibular cochlear nerve aids in these functions. The glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, also has an interesting name. Glossa means tongue, and pharynx is the back part of the throat. Hence, it's no surprise that it carries sensory fibres for taste and sensation from the posterior third, i.e. the back part of the tongue, and has motor fibres that aid in swallowing. It is also involved in saliva secretion. Cranial nerve 10 is the vagus nerve. Now, although I drew it really small on this diagram, the vagus nerve is actually a huge nerve which is mixed and extends further than all other cranial nerves, which is why it is referred to as the wandering nerve. Indeed, it wanders about and supplies a wide range of structures. On the sensory side, it carries sensation from the pharynx, larynx, thorax, abdomen, etc. It is also involved in taste using a flap of tissue at the back of the throat known as the epiglottis. It has motor fibres which aid in swallowing and speech, and autonomic functions such as decreasing heart rate, gastrointestinal tract contractions to aid in moving along food, and sweating. You'll be relieved to know that our next nerve, cranial nerve 11, is much simpler in terms of function. The accessory nerve carries motor fibres which help you shrug your shoulders and turn slash tilt your head. And finally, cranial nerve 12 is a hypoglossal nerve, which is purely motor. If you remember, glossa means tongue, and hypo actually means under. Hence, this is a nerve that is found at the undersurface of the tongue and aids in tongue movements. Okay, that's our 12 pairs of cranial nerves done. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then do subscribe. Okay, see you in another video. Bye.